Welcome primary 5, Ms. Hiba Ahmed is with you. Today we will start in concept 2, lesson 1. This lesson is talking about something which is called ecosystem. As you can see, this is a picture of ecosystem in front of you. What are the components of ecosystem? Yes, it consists of animals, plants, right? And animals and plants are living organisms. Very good. And this picture contains what also? Yes, water, soil, sun, air. So, it also contains non-living things like water, soil, sun, and air. So, the ecosystem is an area that contains living organisms and non-living things. And there is interaction between them. What is the meaning of interaction? Interaction meaning there is relations between them. Let's understand this point. In this picture, the rabbit will eat from the grass. So there is an interaction or relation between the rabbit and the grass, right? It's an interaction between living and another living thing or organism. Okay, and also the rabbit will drink from the water. So there is a relation between the rabbit and the water. And also the rabbit will breathe from the oxygen in the air. So there is a relation between the rabbit and the air. Let's go to the tree. The tree will absorb water and nutrients from the soil. So there is a relation between the tree and the soil. And also the tree will absorb sunlight and carbon dioxide from the air. So there is a relation between the tree and the sun and the tree and the air. So all the components of the ecosystem, there is relation, relations between them. These relations, we call them interaction. So the ecosystem, it's an area or community that contains living organisms and non-living things. And between them, there is interaction. What is the meaning of interaction? Relation. Okay, we will see the energy flow between different living organisms in ecosystem. As you can see, that's a food chain. In this food chain, we have here a plant. The plant take light energy from the sun and they change it to which energy? Super to chemical energy. By which process? Photosynthesis process. Super, very good. So, the plant take the light energy from the sun and change it into chemical energy. Remember, we are talking now about the energy flow. So, we are talking about the energy. So, the plant take the light energy from the sun and change it into what? Chemical energy. Then, the insect eat from the grass. So, the chemical energy inside the grass or the plant will go inside the insect body. Then, the mice eat the insect. So, the chemical energy go from the insect body to what? To the mice body. Then the snake eat the mice. So the chemical energy will transfer from the mice to the snake. Very good. Then the hawk eat the snake. So the chemical energy transfer from the snake to the hawk. So the chemical energy transfer from the plant to the insect to the mice to the snake and finally it reach to the hawk. And that's the flow of energy inside the, this food chain. And we will know what is the meaning of food chain later. When the hog dies, there is a chemical energy inside its body. It will not waste it. No. There is other living organisms, which is called decomposers. The decomposers, they are living organisms that decompose or responsible for eating the dead bodies. The dead bodies. And when they eat the body of the hawk, they return back the chemical energy one more time to the soil in form of nutrients. So, the plant takes light energy from the sun and they change it into chemical energy. Then the chemical energy transfer between or through all of these living organisms until it reaches to the hawk. When the hawk dies, the decomposers eat its dead body and returning back the chemical energy in the form of nutrients 
one more time to this side. Let's talk now about the how in the ecosystem. Any living organism take the energy from the food. So the how take its energy from the food. How can get can eat or get different type of the food like mice, fish, birds, squirrel, rabbits and other small ground animals. Any small animals that live on the ground, the how can eat them. As you can see in this picture. How don't eat plants? It eat what? It eat animals, right? But they depend on the plants to get their energy, right? As we said before, if the hawk eat the snake, so the hawk take the chemical energy from the snake, and the snake take the chemical energy from what? Yes, from the mice, and the mice take chemical energy from the insect, and the insect take the chemical energy from the plant. So, in the in the beginning, the hawk take the chemical energy from the plant, okay? And this chemical energy transfers through the living organism until it reaches to the snake. And when it reaches to the snake, and it go to the hawk when the hawk eats the snake. So, the plants are the main source or the producers of chemical energy to all living organisms. All living organisms need the chemical energy to survive and grow. When we eat the food, the food contains which energy? Yes. The food contains chemical energy. Any type of food we eat, in the first time, the chemical energy is coming from the plant. So we call the plant producers because they produce chemical energy to all the living organisms. But can I ask you a question? Without the sun, the plant can make the chemical energy? No. So as we take in primary form, the sun is the main source of energy or the primary source of energy to all the living organisms, but the plant is the producer or it's the living organism that makes chemical energy to all the living organisms. There is a few predators that can attack hawk, such as eagles or other hawk. And when the hawk enters fight with eagles and other hawk and die, then the decomposers eat or decompose its body and change the chemical energy inside its body into the nutrients. Different types of ecosystem. Do you remember what is the ecosystem? Can you tell me? Yes, ecosystem is an area that contains living organisms and non-living things and between them there is interaction. Different types of ecosystem are ocean, Rainforest, desert, tundra. And we must know that animals don't to choose the food that they eat according to the taste. But they choose the food that they eat according to what their body needs to survive and grow. So each animal eats what according to what its body needs for energy. As caracal eat mouse, not because it loves its taste, but because the caracal needs energy that will enter its body when it eats the mouse. The rabbit eats brass, birds eat butterflies and worms. So caracal eats mouse, rabbit eats grass, birds eat butterflies and worms. And we must know that the interaction between living organisms, we can make it in a model, which is called food chain. As I said before in the beginning, that's a food chain. Food chain, it's a relationship between living organisms that show us the flow of energy and the, feed, the food of each living organism in the food chain. As we said before, the primary source of energy on the Earth is the Sun.
let's go to lesson 2. The living organisms are classified or divided into three groups according what they eat and two producers, consumers, decomposers. One more time, producers, consumers, decomposers. Let's start with the producers. As we said before, the plants, they are the only living organisms that produce chemical energy to all the living organisms on Earth by photosynthesis process. So they produce chemical energy to all living organisms, so we call them producers. So what are the producers? They are the living organisms that can make their own food. They don't need any other living organisms or depend. They don't depend on any other living organisms to get their food. For example, the plants. And the plants are the only example of producers in the ecosystem. Consumers, they are opposite to producers. They are living organisms that cannot make their own food, but they depend on other plants or other animals to get their food. So, don't forget, producers, they cannot make their own food, but consume, sorry, producers, they can make their own food, but consumers, they cannot make their own food. We have three types of consumers, which are primary, secondary, tertiary. Primary, secondary, tertiary. What are the difference between the different types of consumers? Primary consumers, they are animals that eat plants, like insects. Secondary consumers, they are the animals that eat the primary consumer. As we said before, the insect eat the plant, so it's a primary consumer. When the bird eats insect, so the bird eats a secondary consumer because it feeds on primary consumer. Number three, tertiary consumer. They are animals that eat secondary consumer. Okay, for example, when the insect eats a plant, so the insect is primary consumer. And when the mice eat the insect, so the insect is so the mice is secondary consumer. And when the snake eat the mice, so the snake is tertiary consumer. So primary consumer eats plants, secondary consumer eat primary consumer, tertiary consumer eat secondary cons consumer. And tertiary consumer are large meat eating like crocodile, lion, cheetah, hawk eagles, all the big predators in the ecosystem, we call them tertiary consumers. Can you tell me what's the type of this consumer? Yes, very good. Secondary consumer, why? Because it feeds on primary consumer, which is the insect. And what is this? Yes, tertiary. Why? Because it feeds on secondary consumer. Very good. And what is this? Yes, primary consumer. Why? Because it feeds on plants. Let's go to third type of living organisms. We finish the producers and we know that they are the living organisms that can make their own food and have only one example, which is plants. Number two, the consumers. They are the living organisms that cannot make their own food. And now let's go to the decomposers. Decomposers. They are the living organisms that decompose the dead bodies. Decompose or decay the dead bodies. And we have some examples on them, which are fungi, bacteria, worms, and mellibeads. Fungi, bacteria, worms, and mellibeads. And the decomposers make process which is called decomposition process. As you can see, it's an apple. No one eat this apple. This apple will remain forever? No. Sometime and it will disappear. What will make it disappear? It's the, it's the decomposers. The decomposers will start to feed on this apple until it disappears and change this apple into what? Yes, into nutrients. And also, it's the decomposition process 
or decaying of dead bodies. Decaying meaning decomposing. And as we said before, types of decomposers are fungi, bacteria, worms, and this the millipedes. The food chain. This is a food chain as we said before. It's a model that show one liner of feeding relationship between the living organisms and also show us the flow of energy. So the food chain show us one liner of feeding relationship. What is the meaning of one liner of feeding relationship? Meaning it allow us to know each animal feed on what? Okay. So it allow us to know each animal feed on what. But it show just one liner. Okay. It show us that the hog only eat the snake. But actually the hog doesn't only eat the snake. The hog eat. As we said before, the hog can eat what? Squirrel, squirrel, rabbits, birds. Right? Not only the snake. But for the chain, show us one liner of food relationship and also allow us to know the energy flow between the living organisms. We have two different types of living organisms which is called prey and predator. Prey is the animal that hunted and eaten by other animals. Like here, the hawk. The hawk here, uh, sorry, like here the lizard. The lizard is here, it's a prey. It attacked by the hawk and the hawk hunted it and eat it. Number two, the predator. The predators are animals that hunt and eat other animals, like crocodile and lion. Which one is the predator? Yes, the lion. Which one is the prey? Yes, zebra. Thank you for listening. Mr. Ahmad was with you.